BYU football had their first scrimmage of training camp. What do we make of it? What did we learn? We'll get to that. We'll also let you hear a little bit from Jaron Hall of his takeaways from that scrimmage. We'll also catch up from the weekend that was in BYU sports. BYU women's soccer being taught a lesson down there in North Carolina. We've got all of that ahead on today's show. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Our title sponsor today is our friends over at LinkedIn. They are the official college football recruiting sponsor across the Locked On College Network. LinkedIn Jobs is helping you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Uh, just one more thank you for you guys checking out the show every single day. You guys are the best. We love to be with you guys talking all things BYU. And our goal here, simply stated, is to be your one-stop shop for all the BYU sports news you guys need to know about. So that way, you guys are the smartest BYU fans in the room when you're talking about the Cougars with your family and friends. We're very proud to be part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Of course, the motto is your team every day. And as such, we are your only daily podcast focused on the BYU Cougars. By way of introduction for any of you who may be checking us out for the very first time, my name is Jake. I work for the KSL Sports Zone in Salt Lake City, Utah as the executive producer of DJ and PK. And I spend my off hours doing this podcast and absolutely love doing it. Now, let me grab this real quick. So hang on for just a second here. Those of you watching this on YouTube, uh, I'm going to hold this up here. Uh, that right there, I promised we were going to do a 1,000 subscriber giveaway. Well, uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, so that's a nice royal blue pullover. I'll have more details on how you can go about winning that. And those of you who are listening, uh, it's just it's a standard Nike royal blue pull, pullover. You'll be able to wear it to any BYU game you wanted to this year. Uh, we'll have more details on how you can go about winning that later on in today's show. So stay tuned for that. But let's get right to it. Uh, BYU football holding their first training camp scrimmage over the weekend at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. I threw it out on Friday's show. And by the way, I love this fan base. I love you guys who listen to this podcast. And I, I mean that sincerely because I threw it on Friday and said, Hey, if any of you happen to be going to the scrimmage, you know, it wouldn't mind if you guys were to like uh, send me some tidbits of what's going on with the action folks, no less than six of you, six of you uh, reached out and said, Hey, I'll be there. I'll, I'll send you some tidbits. So you guys, you're my eyes and ears on the ground. So thank you to all of you who did reach out and Hey, a lot more people attending that scrimmage than I guess originally I anticipated, but some good stuff coming out of it. So let's get to the uh, the news from the scrimmage. I'm going to pull my phone here and right, I pass along what I learned about this. So uh, from the different reports from all of you out there, I gathered that Cody Epps, uh, I, I, that's not nice, Isaiah Nakua. That's that's a blast from the past, right? Isaiah Nakua. Uh, Puka Nakua, Gunnar Romney, Dallin Holker, John Nelson, George Udo, and Micah Harper were all held out of the scrimmage. Uh, Keenan Peely was dressed from what I heard, but saw very sparing action if he played at all in the scrimmage. So there were a number of big names, first stringer types that did not participate in the scrimmage. The scrimmage was split up essentially into two parts from what we heard from both coaches as well as what you guys were telling me. Uh, 40, roughly 40 plays of what they call thud, where essentially as soon as you get hands as a defender on the opposing offensive player, they blow the play dead, and then you get right back to playing. And then there's about 50 plays after that of live action where the twos, threes, and fours were going after it full bore. So uh, a lot of the ones, the twos, a lot of them did not see action in that live portion of practice, but there was some live action. And that's that's critical, especially for young guys. They have not played at this level. They're still trying to get their feet underneath them figuratively, making sure that they uh, know their plays uh, going out there. And the biggest thing is when you play with thud ten and tempo, and what thud means is essentially you hit and you touch a guy and then you're, the play's blown dead. There's no tackling to the ground in those scenarios. Well, that actually stops a lot of the quote-unquote uh, yards after contact, the yak uh, from happening because there are running backs who they're going to take a hit from a guy like Tyler Algier last year, take that first hit. They're not going down. But in the practice scenario, that thud scenario, that first hit, that's where he's marked down. We all know that very few running backs are going to be okay with taking that first hit and going down on first contact. That's just not how they're built. So 
there's a little bit of a grain of salt to be taken with that. But some of the things coming out of practice were that I heard that uh, the offense had no turnovers. We heard that from the coaches in the post game, and that's actually a positive. You don't want to see turnovers. But at the same time, the defense held their own. Uh, I was told that BYU scored at least one, possibly two touchdowns, depending on how you were scoring it at home. And I know that sounds really weird, but it sounds like during that thud portion, uh, it seemed like, according to one person, every time it seemed like a guy was getting close to the end zone, they'd be like, you're down right there. They'd blow the whistle like, well, you just didn't get in the end. Okay, whatever. So at least one or two touchdowns were scored by the offense. But the defense, I, I heard, and what, I, what it sounds like from the coaches, is the defense had its moments during the scrimmage. Guys that stood out, let's also run that down real quick. I, we all saw this on the social media highlights, if you saw that thrown out there. Uh, Gumby himself, Gabe Summers, I, I actually think he is one of the more still highly underrated uh, key cogs in BYU's defensive line. Sounds like he had a pretty nice day as well as Fisher Jackson. I heard the BYU defensive line from at least two or three of you guys out there said the defensive line actually held their own for the most part in this. And that's a positive if you're a BYU fan. We all have been wondering, how is this BYU defense going to hold up? And going up against a pretty high-powered offense like they have on the opposite sideline from them is a great proving ground for them to get uh, some improvement. And it sounds like the defense had a better day. Uh, I, I heard a lot of you out there that I reached out with your thoughts that the defensive secondary was fantastic. One of my tried and trues, as I call him, one of my practice insiders was on hand himself. And he said that the secondary in, in particular had a very good day. He said the cornerbacks were going one-on-one. -on -one, and let's be very clear. A lot of the first string wide receivers weren't out there. So the Puka Nakua's, the Gunnar Romney's, even Cody Epps was not available. So they weren't going true ones versus ones, but he said the cornerbacks and safeties actually had a pretty good day in his opinion. The other thing about this is guys are starting to emerge in fall camp as guys who may be options, maybe not as soon as this season, but they're starting to show that they are developing into nice players. Aaron Roderick highlighted a kid like Tanner Wall, a return missionary walk-on for the BYU football program. Uh, I think A-Rod used the comment, the mission was not good for him. He said physically he just did not look the part when he got back from his mission, but I saw Tanner the other day dude is absolutely ripped he has transformed his body and it sounds like he had a very good day during the scrimmage on saturday that's the nice part for guys like this they get that opportunity and they start to emerge start to show hey we're starting to figure things out here and that is what the positive of what these scrimmages can do for guys another wide receiver to keep an eye on folks i don't think necessarily for this year but he is starting uh, from what i hear to really figure things out is terrence fall Kid from France who uh, decided he wanted to play American football, moved to the United States to play high school ball. He's been in the program at BYU. This is his third year now. And it sounds like he is starting to really kind of grasp the concepts and, and understanding, okay, this is what I need to do on this play and really start to put things together. Guys like that are always a positive if you're a BYU fan because he has all the physical tools. That, that's the thing about Terrence Fall. It's never been a thing about physical tools for him. It's more about, okay, can he grasp the nuances of a game he did not play for most of his life growing up? A lot of guys have played football for their entire lives. Guys like Gunnar Romney have been uh, suiting up since they were, what, five, six, seven years old? Terrence Fall didn't come to the game till later on in life, and it sounds like, though, he is starting to grasp on those nuances, and that's a positive sign because, like I said, he has all the physical tools to be a legit D1 receiver for BYU. Just a matter of getting him kind of engrossed in the game and getting him to understand, okay, this is how things function and all that stuff. That, that, that's the thing about this is, there are a lot of guys who have the physical gifts necessary to play Division One or even NFL level football. But the thing about it is sometimes they have other things outside of that that hold them back from accomplishing all of that. It sounds like Terrence Fall, he's still got time on his hands, my friends. He is only a redshirt freshman officially on BYU's roster. That's the crazy thing about the COVID here and uh, having redshirts and all that. Like He's still got plenty of time in front of him to continue to develop. And if he ends up being a guy who's at, at minimum a rotation piece for BYU at some point in his career, it has paid off. I really think that will have paid off on the bet on him. Now, a couple other notes for you guys. Along the offensive line, something that I've been trying to kind of get my mind around, trying to figure out, okay, what's the offensive line going to look like? I saw this in the highlight reel, and what I heard from a couple of you guys is that the starting offensive line, when the ones were in there, when Jaron Hall was out on the field, the starting offensive line went Blake Freeland at left guard, Clark Barrington at left, excuse me, Blake Freeland at left tackle, Clark Barrington at left guard, Connor Pay at center, Harris Lachance at right guard, and then Kingsley Suomataia at right tackle. 
that appears to me, at least at this juncture, as we kind of approach the midway point of training camp for BYU here, that appears to be the first string offensive line. And I know some of you are probably well, what, what happened to Joe Tukuafu? He's been limited by some uh, injury stuff early on in camp. He's actually currently running as the number two center for BYU. So if a guy like Connor Pay is not able to uh, be the consistent option that I expect he will be, a guy like Joe Tukuafu probably steps in right away and takes over that center spot. The nice part is that second string offensive line right now uh, based on what the people, uh, I kind of, I'm, I was piecing all this together. So I apologize if things seem a little scatterbrained, but like I said, we got six different people sending you notes. You try and put it all together in order and you try and make sense of that. But uh, from the, so f- on the second string offensive line, you had Braden Kime at left tackle, Campbell Barrington, the freshman All American at left guard. So he'd be the backup to his older brother Clark at left guard, Joe Tukuafu at center, uh, Park, uh, not Parker Daw, Sam Daw, the cousin of Parker Daw at right guard. And by the way, Daw, a walk on a guy transferred in from Idaho State. He is impressed, folks. He is really kind of emerged as a solid option for BYU at that guard spot. So he's currently running at the number two right guard. And then the Arizona State transfer, Sione Becoso at right tackle. And one of the people I was talking to, uh, this is actually goes back to last week, even before the scrimmage. What I was told is Sione Vecoso, give him a year, like this year, to really work into what BYU is doing, understand the concepts, the grasp kind of the, the full offense. They think that he could challenge immediately as a starter for BYU going into Big 12 play. He's got the physical tools. I've seen him. He looks like a mountain of a man. He is everything you want in an offensive lineman. Tall, kind of lean, but it has got plenty of girth about him. It, it just screams to me one of the next offensive tackles for BYU. Maybe it's him and Kingsley Suamatia down the road for BYU, man, in that left and right tackle position. But he has got some gifts folks keep an eye on him now a couple of the notes for you guys uh, before we get to some of the comments i'm gonna let you hear uh part of what jaron hall had to say about the scrimmage we'll get to that in a moment is that two other guys i wanted to mention for uh standouts from the scrimmage for byu is ethan erickson he is continuing just to impress folks uh it may be a year away before he truly is part of the rotation at tight end for byu but ethan erickson is a name to pay attention to down the road he is just emerging left and right i heard it during spring ball i've heard it at multiple points during training camp so far i heard it over the summer from people and what he did in the scrimmage did nothing to dissuade people from thinking that he is going to be a guy that can really impress and then on the defensive side of the football a new linebacker name has emerged and i've seen it started a kind of percolate around the program over the past couple of weeks. But Tavita Gagne, he had an injury last year that knocked him out for at least part of the season last year. He's a former defensive back at the high school level who walked on with the BYU football program. But Tavita Gagne has made an impression early on in training camp. I don't know if that necessarily means that he's currently as a as a second string linebacker because you have guys like Max Tooley, Peyton Wilgar, Keenan Peely, uh, Ben Bywater, who are kind of the front line for the linebacking core. Guys like Pepe Tanavasa also factor in there. But a guy to keep an eye on is Tavita Gagne. He is a guy who has apparently really impressed some folks. So keep an eye on him. I think he wears the number, is it 27? I, I might be wrong on that. I actually can pull my roster here and I'm find that number for you. But he's one that's been very impressive, at least early on in camp. Like I said, does that mean he's immediately going to be a day one starter? No, it doesn't. But he's just another part of this. Uh, yeah, Tavita Gagne. There we go. Number 27, six foot two, 225 pound red shirt junior out of Stansbury High School in the Tooele area. So that's just one of the name to pay attention to. So coming up next, I want to let you guys hear from Jaron Hall because he said BYU's defense in his mind is the best it's been in the five years he's been playing for the Cougars. Is he serious about that? Well, you'll get a, uh, get a sense of how he went about it. He'll say it in his own words. And you'll hear that coming up here in just a moment. First, though, a word on our friends over at LinkedIn. LinkedIn, uh, obviously, with fall coming, you need the right people to on your job to on your team, excuse me, to help your small business fire on all cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to help you make it find it easy find make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free job post in just minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond with the world's largest professional network of over eight. 110 million people. Simple tools like screening questions will make it easier to focus on the candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you would like to interview and hire. And it's why small businesses rank LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. So my friends, here's what you need to do. Go to LinkedIn jobs. They're helping you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers are visiting LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college right now. Once again, that's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. 
Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen to the day. Always appreciate you guys checking out the show. It's so much fun to sit down and kind of think about, okay, which angles do we want to attack on each day edition of the show? Uh, coming up later this week, by the way, I had a really, really fun interview at BYU uh, Photo Day last Wednesday with Malik Moore. Ended up at Caleb Hayes actually joined in the conversation. It was a wide-ranging conversation, and I can tell you this much. You are not going to want to miss it it was just one of those shows that i i didn't know necessarily was going to come next in this interview but we'll get to that later this week i want you guys to hear that and we might also have a little bit of a special announcement coming up in terms of a name image and likeness agreement with one of byu star players that might be joining us weekly if we can get things uh settled this week it sure looks like we're close to it once we have that officially uh, i guess signed in ink i guess is the use the terminology we'll be sure to reveal that as well so stay tuned got a fun week ahead here on Locked On Cougars. All right, time now for me to get out of the way with my takeaways from BYU training camp. Well, let's let you hear from QB1 himself, Jaron Hall, speaking after BYU's training camp, their first scrimmage on Saturday. Today, we still got a little bit to work on. I think sometimes in scrimmages, urgency can be a little low. Um, so just treating it more like a game, especially in these scrimmages with a few limited snaps. So we got, I think we only got two drives or three drives together. So just making the most of it, more urgency. Uh, one good drive, two other drives we obviously didn't, we didn't perform super great on. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's still early in camp, but we just got to have a little more urgency to treat things game-like. Overall, would you say the offense won the day or the defense? Or what did you <laughs> I will let Coach Sitake give you the answer. He's the middle man. I'm a little biased. How do you evaluate your offensive line's performance? Good as always. I mean, those guys have a, have a tough job every day against our D-line. It's tough when you go against the same guys every day. You got to find uh, new, innovative ways to call your plays so that things aren't uh, relayed across the ball. But uh, no, they have a lot of work to do every day. I thought they did very well today. As always, it's never a surprise with those guys. Kind of similar question that Chris Brooks kind of leading that running back group, but how's the backs look as a whole? Really good. Um, again, it's hard during scrimmages just because everything's tagged off and the officials are really good at calling it pretty quickly. So you don't get to see a lot of the uh, yards after contact that we, you know, really seem to thrive on the last couple years with our backs. And I know, you know, the, our backs this year will do the same. But uh, other than that, yeah, they look good. Good cuts, making good reads. Um, yeah, they look good. You're about the midway point of fall camp here. What, I guess, evaluate where you think stand right now and where you think things need to go in the next couple of weeks leading up to game week. Yeah, definitely not game ready yet. We need more reps, obviously, as a, as, a, as a team going against our defense, as many team reps as we can get just to simulate the flow of a game, the speed of a game. The scrimmages are great for that, going through our full team routine. So I think as many snaps as we can get against our defense the next two weeks leading up to game prep, is, I think is the most important thing for us. Everything else, you know, we know what we're doing, we know what we're supposed to do, but it's just simulating the speed of it. Luckily, our defense is one of the best defense I've, I've gone against in my five years at BYU. So they give us really good looks every day, which is capitalizing and getting as many team reps as we can. What makes them the best defense you face in the five years you've been here? Very, a lot of depth. Linebacking core uh, leads the way through all of that. I mean, you can look all across the board with those guys. Um, you know, captains on the team leading the way, kind of in the middle of everything, pass game, run game. They do a great job of facilitating their defense. Very, very uh, experienced DB core this year, and our D linemen the same. We have a, a lot of depth at D line, a lot of guys that have played a lot of games. So just the experience, the athleticism we have makes them a tough defense to go against. But it's great for us. It's, 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 uh, you know, it's game like reps every day, and it's something that we need to get more. There you go, Jaron Hall. And man, that's a pretty. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. That's a pretty ringing endorsement from him to say that's the best defense he's faced in terms of his, his own team in the five years he's been at BYU. Think of some of these defenses, the 2020 defense. I know that he was out most of the year, but that was a pretty ferocious defense. Uh, Kalani Sitake has had some pretty good units over the years. And for Jaron Hall to say that, I, the, I easily could have been one of the things you say, okay, he's just trying to pump his guys up. Jaron's not a guy who is going to do that. That's not Jaron's style. I, I've interviewed Jaron enough during his time as a Cougar. This is a guy who is very straightforward, very to the point, and just that he doesn't put fluff out there. It's, it, maybe he's turned over a new leaf and is trying to put more of that out there, but 
I'm inclined to believe that he's serious about that take. So very interesting stuff there. Uh, by the way, also uh, the, the thing that he's talking about with the depth for the secondary, the linebackers, the defensive line, he's not wrong. BYU, according to Bill Connolly, is the second highest in terms of overall production returning uh, for a team in the all entirety of college football. 85% of the production for BYU is coming back this year for the Cougars. 97% of their production on defense is coming back. And I know the defense had its struggles last year, but a lot of that was, I, in my opinion, due to youth and inexperience. So I'm not 100% convinced I'm ready to become a believer that BYU's defense has uh, turned a page and they've, they've figured things out. But I'm at the same time, I'm starting to feel like this defense may be a little underrated and a little, I don't know how to say it, just a little overlooked going into the season. If this defense gets back to being a top 50, top 40 type defense in college football, we're talking about a more well-rounded BYU football program that I think very easily could challenge for 10, 11 wins. If that defense can get the stops they need to get to give this offense the ball, that's going to bode well for BYU's chances this season. But th there's still time to go, folks. We're still early on in training camp. We haven't even seen a game yet. We're 19 days away, so we're under three weeks. That's the exciting part. But we need to see games and see what they do on a true game-like uh, reps and that type of stuff. And that ultimately, I think, will be the true litmus test of how good this defense truly can be. And by the way, the defense game one against USF versus the defense that potentially faces Notre Dame versus the defense that ends the season against Stanford could be very, very different looking. We saw that last year. They started with defense was very good. The first three games last year, those games against Arizona, Utah, and Arizona state 17, 16 and 17 points, or was it 16, 17, 17? They're very good. The first three games injuries obviously caught up with them at mid season, but the hope is this year, there's a better uh, product on the field as a, as a unit for the defense throughout the season. And I think the, the experience factor that BYU got last year alone should help them do that. One other real quick thing I failed to note this. I uh, talked about the running back position. Guys like Christopher Brooks, Lopini Katoa, Miles Davis. Uh, Hinkley Rapati, I heard, had a pretty good day against the twos and threes. Uh, the, the nice part is the running backs. Uh, the guys who went live had good moments. Guys like Rapati as well as Miles Davis. I also heard that Jackson McChesney had his moments. So the running back unit had a pretty good day on the football field on Saturday. But uh, one person who had, had not seen a Christopher Brooks uh, quite yet this season, uh, a fan who was out there at the scrimmage, one of you that sent me in the note, you know who you are. He said that he's not afraid to put his shoulder down. This dude likes to get after it. He he, he truly does. I, I've seen it enough during spring ball and what I've seen through fall camp so far. Christopher Brooks sure looks the part. I, I absolutely think that he was an absolute home run get for BYU in the transfer uh, in the transfer portal to bring him into the program. And then one final name to pay attention to. I, he Similar to what I talked about earlier on in today's podcast, he may not truly be a factor this year they may call upon him at some point just due to some if they have need the depth joshua singh is a name to pay attention to he's a severely undersized defensive tackle for byu i loved him at the high school level playing for orham high school they list him i think at six foot 280 pounds or something like that on byu's roster i actually can pull it up real quick while i'm talking about him but what he is is he's just an absolute machine in the middle he understands leverage better than almost anybody out there listen at six foot 275 pounds out of Orem High School. Folks, if he's six foot, I'm six foot two, and I stand six foot flat. So uh, he's not the tallest guy in the world. He understands leverage. He plays with just reckless abandon, ferocity, tenacity, all of the different adjectives you can insert here. Uh, he absolutely was a man amongst boys from what I heard here against the twos and threes on Saturday. Uh, as he continues to kind of evolve in this BYU defense, don't be surprised if he's number 90. Uh, Joshua Singh suddenly pop up on the field and make a play, and you're like, Who's that dude? Well, you heard it here on the Locked On Cougars podcast. He's a guy to pay attention to because he is a young buck, but the way he plays football, it's a fun, fun style of football. Think of a guy like uh, Aaron Donald type. Aaron Donald's not the tallest, the biggest, or the fastest defensive tackle in the NFL. But what he is, is he's the perfect combo, and he understands his game as bad as well as anybody does on the football field. That's why he is maybe the best single defensive player in the entirety of the NFL. Guy Joshua Singh is very much built in that type of a mold. I'm not saying he's Aaron Donald because if he was to Aaron Don Donald, he probably would have been recruited and not have to walk on at BYU, but he plays that type of a game. He understands what his strengths are and he makes sure that he magnifies them with the way he plays football. All right, uh, coming up here in just a minute, we'll round out today, show us some notes. Uh, Zach Wilson gets injured over the weekend in the opening weekend of NFL preseason. Women's soccer had a rough trip to North Carolina and 
how you can go about winning that really cool uh, pullover I showed you a little bit earlier on in today's podcast in just a moment. First, though, a word on our friends over at Built Bar. Many of you out there want to support BYU football. Many of you are supporting BYU football by buying your tickets, by buying all the gear that you got, all that stuff. There's another way you can support BYU football and their players in particular, and that is by supporting our friends at Built Bar. Built Bar are the best tasting protein bars that I've ever had, my friends. Uh, I absolutely think they're they're just absolutely incredible. The best part is they got the regular Built Bars. They also have their Built Puffs. And no matter which one you favor, the best part is when you buy them, you're supporting the built uh, branded companies via their name, image, and likeness agreement by giving BYU football players cash. That's the thing about this. Each one of these walk-ons for the BYU football program is having their uh, tuition paid for ostensibly. They can pick how they want to spend it, but they're giving them enough money for their tuition as a walk-on in the BYU football program. And all scholarship players are getting money from Built Bar via their name, image, and likeness agreement. It's a fantastic, fantastic thing that Built Bar is doing. And the way you can support that is by going to built.com right now and placing your order there. While you're there, use the promo code locked on 15. We have a new promo code. That's L O C K E D O N 1 5. That's locked on 15 for 15% off your order. Make sure you add the locked on there. Make sure you note that. Locked on 15, 15% off the order for you. And at the same time, you're supporting BYU football by supporting our friends at Built Bar. All right, before we go on today's show, let's catch up on some other news out there in Cougar sports. I want to send our best wishes to Zach Wilson. He is headed to Los Angeles to undergo knee surgery. He has a bone bruise as well as an injured meniscus. He's going to undergo a knee surgery. Uh, It sounds like it's Neil Atrache, however you say his name. He's one of the renowned uh, uh, orthopedic surgeons out there. He's based in Los Angeles. So Zach's making the flight out to LA to undergo that surgery. Uh, The hope is they just have to trim up his meniscus, I guess is what the terminology is. If that happens... He's going to be out anywhere between two to four weeks. So his week one availability is in question right now for the New York Jets. But I just want to wish him the best. Did not look good when he made that plant on Friday night. I was getting ready for my high school football game. I was out at American Fork High School getting ready as they were taking on Roy. And I saw the replay on Twitter. I'm like, oh, that didn't look good. The good news is no other ligament damage. That's the positive if you're a New York Jets slash BYU fan who's rooting on Zach Wilson, and we are right here on Locked On Cougar. So best of luck to him. Uh, we'll get more of a kind of a full recap of the NFL preseason and the storylines coming out of it later this week. Just wanted to get that one out of there because Zach, obviously, kind of the headlining thing coming out of the preseason is that injury. And here's hoping it's closer to that two-week window versus maybe four or six weeks. But it's all, I guess, apparently depends based on the reporting I saw of how how uh, the surgery goes out there in LA. Uh, the women's soccer program at BYU ranked number three in the country had a rough weekend. They went to number 10, North Carolina playing in Chapel Hill on Saturday night, lost two nil to the 10th ranked Tar Heels. Uh, head coach Jennifer Rockwood was quoted as saying, I thought we had our hands a little for a little hand. I thought I th- we had our hands full a little more than what we had planned on tonight. Coming out here and playing against a team like North Carolina at home was certainly a challenge. I don't think we, we rose to the occasion. We came out a little slow. We didn't play with the confidence out there and we just didn't handle the pressure very well. So North Carolina uh, really controlled the tempo. Uh, so BYU, the good news is it did not affect BYU's overall record. They're not 0-1 to start the season. It was officially an exhibition game for BYU. They now travel to California this Thursday when they open up the regular season against Cal State Fullerton. Once again, that'll be Thursday night. The broadcast will be on the BYURadio.org or BYU Radio app if you want to tune into that. That'll be on Thursday as BYU takes on the Titans down there in Fullerton, California. And then one other note real quick for you guys, BYU men's golfers Carson Lindell, David Timmons, Elijah Turner, and Brock Goyan have advanced through local qualifying and begin play in the U.S. Amateur at the Ridgewood Country Club beginning today. It goes all week long in Paramus, New Jersey. Fantastic to see four BYU golfers making the trip out there for the U.S. Amateur. This is one of the premier tournaments for amateur golfers. These are the guys that you're probably going to see on the PGA Tour in the next next four to five years. Well, an opportunity for all four of these guys to go out and uh, show what they can do. It's really cool to see four guys getting that chance and congratulations to them. All right. Final thing. Uh, Let me pull this up one more time. So I I didn't do our thousand subscriber giveaway when we reach a thousand subscribers, we're somewhere in the 1200 range. I'm not even 1300 subscribers. So all of you are going to have a chance to win this. Uh, it's a Nike dry fit pullover, nice Royal blue. It's a size XL. So, uh, if you win this and you're a guy that doesn't fit in an XL, we'll find something else we can get you. But this is what we're going to give away, uh, for the hundred subscriber giveaway. And I'd love to have you guys be a part of this. So the way to do this 
is uh, we're going to have you guys email in your submission. So the way to do it is you're going to email us locked on BYU at gmail.com. That is L O C K E D O N B Y U at gmail.com. Send it in and say, you heard it here on the locked on Cougars podcast. You saw it on YouTube and tell me that you have, you're, you're listening to the show. You saw the, the entry here and you'd like to win. That's simple as that. That's all I'm going to do. If you want to show that you're a big Cougar fan of some sort, great. But I, I'm just simply throwing it out there. If you'd like to win that pullover, all you got to do is submit your submit, send in your information, your name, uh, your phone number, that type of stuff. And then just tell me, hey, I'd like to win that pullover. And like I said, if you don't fit in Excel, we'll find something else we can get you. So I, I'm not I'm not afraid of uh, giving you a gift card potentially to replace the kind of the value for that if we have to. But uh, if you'd like to win that, thousand subscriber giveaway there you go locked on byu at gmail.com send in your submissions now would love to hear from you guys and hopefully you'll be the winner all right that's going to do it for today's edition of the podcast a big thank you for making us your first listen today always appreciate you guys checking out the show now go make our your second listen today our friends over at the locked on big 12 podcast it's byu's new conference home beginning in 2023 get caught up on everything going on in that conference with josh neighbors every single day get it free and available wherever you get your podcast, just like this one. That'll do it for me. Have a great rest of your day whenever you hear this. This has been the Locked On Cougars podcast for August 15th, 2022. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. See ya.